It is being sold as a means to improve the planning process here in the UK and as a step towards a more sustainable future for the nation's construction industry. But is the levelling up and regeneration bill currently before Parliament actually something far more sinister? Is it, in fact, a stealth attack against demolition? A Trojan horse designed to outlaw demolition under the guise of planning improvements. According to a report in the Financial Times, more than 100 companies in the UK property industry have urged Prime Minister Rishi Sunak to make planning decisions take account of climate change by law. The group wrote to the Prime Minister and three Secretaries of State, arguing that the existing planning system in England undermines the property sector's ability to deliver high-quality sustainable homes at speed and scale. The executive said the levelling up and regeneration bill, currently moving through Parliament, offers an opportunity to address the lack of focus on climate change in planning decisions. In its current form, the bill includes some proposed planning reforms but does not link the system with the UK's environmental ambitions. Without a new climate clause and clear legal alignment, planning policy could risk going backwards, undermining vital investment, says the letter. Louise Hutchins, head of policy at the UK Green Building Council, an industry group focusing on sustainable construction, which organised the letter, said England has a planning system that fails to integrate the government's own climate commitments that the call for a prioritisation of environmental considerations could have wider implications for the UK demolition industry. Just last week, construction giant May said that ministers should use revised planning rules to discourage developers from unnecessarily demolishing buildings. May's chief executive Gareth Lewis says many buildings may not require demolition and can be transformed and renewed through retrofit, saving tonnes of embodied carbon in the process. That would be bad not just for the UK demolition industry, but for the whole property sector. The often costly upgrades required to bring buildings up to standard has compounded fears that some shops and offices could become stranded assets. 